had a, uh, thought I had a really good week this week. Guys uh, went off our bye with some good energy and focus and, and uh, thought that we uh, prepared well this week for a, a great opportunity and great challenge in, uh, in Penn State. So we're um, going to have to be at our very, very best without question. So uh, a couple things to announce. I uh, did say it last night, but Hayden uh, Whitehead has been granted his additional year from the NCAA, which is huge news for us. And uh, we kind of, you know, we were expecting that, but you never know until you get the official word. So, but that's uh, very important for us to have him another year. He has not just a great job as a punter you know, from a technical perspective and execution, but just his leadership and his work ethic and the way he does everything every day. It's just a huge um, part of our culture that we're building. And then um, also um, had it really after the, uh, the Maryland game, started having these discussions with our staff and then going into um, the weeks that followed, um, just really felt like that uh, um, Peyton Ramsey deserved to be one of our captains. And so with, with Coy going down, we really kind of lost that fourth guy on the field. And so we'd already had that in the, in the works. And then I actually met with him before we even found out that Michael was going to be out. But but uh, just felt like that he's earned it. You know, he's a guy we go through and vote and everything. He was the next guy um, on the list of, of votes and uh, just felt like the way he's handled everything and the way he responded, especially when that first time at Maryland when it was just kind of, you know, he had to come in at a critical time and play um, at a very high level without even knowing he'd be out there. Um, and then that just continued. So uh, he's just uh, proven himself over and over in this program. And uh, I just think that that's something he's earned and very worthy of. So I'm excited for him and that opportunity. And so uh, I just feel like that's uh, those kind of guys, the buy-in, uh, the, all the things he does off the field, the way he trains, the way he prepares. Uh, the way he works in, in the weight room in the offseason um, is infectious to this program, and we're getting that. Like I said, what, uh, um, Hayden's the same exact. I don't know if I've ever had a specialist work at his level, and then Nate Snyder is probably a close second. You know, the two guys that have physically worked in that weight room, and it affects everybody around him in that room. So um, just those two guys, Peyton and uh, Hayden, just uh, continue to be a huge part of what we're building here. So questions? Which did you guys practice outdoors a week? No, we got two days outdoors, two days indoors. You know, the two days when it was 10 degrees and it was <laughs> snow and ice, it was pretty difficult to get out there. So, but I felt like we got two really good days outside in, in the temperatures that we're going to see uh, on game day. So if the weatherman is correct, which that is not always the case, but uh, uh, we think we'll be pretty close to that, that realm. So feel good about that. And we've been out in it before, but uh, yeah, we were two out of the four. I guess how do you inform Peyton that he'd be a captain and help me? Pulled him in, to? sat him down, you know, just talked him through it and just told him that uh, felt like that he had earned it and all the reasons kind of I stated and just some other things too. I just thought that you know, I do a lot of one-on-ones with our guys mm -hmm. as much as possible. So that's how I handled it. And then I actually, the very next team meeting we had announced to the team. And, and uh, matter of fact, and I told him, I said, hey, when, when I announced this, they're going to give you a standing ovation. And I never said a word to the team. And sure enough, when I announced it, man, I just, everybody was up and just, uh, because I just know what they think of me. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. How much, so, how much of that is more so just label considering, you know, what he's been to the team already this oh, year? Yeah. And to me, it's just a matter of, you know, you kind of you know, get a chance to be kind of put out in that position, you know, officially. But, you know, leaders are leaders. You know, that's why we always tell our, our you know, as coaches, you talk about, you know, guys are going to influence. If you're a leader, you have influence, you know. And so whether you're in a position or not, whether you're named or not, and sometimes that can be, you know, the other direction. So you got to make sure if you see guys that are influencing your team, and it's not what you want, and you got to address it as well. But, but leadership is influence, and, and he has influence. Like you said, whether or not he, you know, wears that title or not. But I just think that it just is indicative of, you know, what uh, what he continues to mean to our program, and just the kind of, um, you know, the way he's lived out, you know, the core values that we have as a program has been pretty awesome. So just to follow up, as you about Taiwan on Monday, how did you find him? I know he was a highly recruited guy, but how did? Kind of Indiana's relationship start with him. From your well, first of all, we've all you know we recruit that area heavily, and uh, you know I was down in there um, when I was at South Florida, and uh, um, got to know their coaches at that time, and and then you, you know Coach Shelby went down. That's one of his schools, and so we just you know like I told before, we have you know we have areas in Florida. You know we treat it like a you know a, a very important part of our recruiting, and so. Um, just building those relationships. So you go down there and you, you got a guy like that that's in one of our schools that we go to every year. And, and uh, you start, you know, identifying those guys when they're young and then you start building relationships <coughs> with them. And, and then and it, at that point, you kind of, you kind of, um, you know, you have to see what kind of 
response do you get from them? What kind of interest do they have in us? You know, and so we can want them all we want, but if they don't have any interest in us, it just kind of, you know, eventually just kind of dies off. But, but uh, so it, it became very mutual, you know, as we reached out to him and, and all the ways that we were allowed to, and, and as that grows, you know, through that process, and then once they become juniors, you can message them, and, and then, uh, you know, that's when he starts, because he can call us, you know, at that point, even as a junior, and anytime he wants to, and so he was big into that. So we built that right. He's, he's a FaceTime guy. So he FaceTimed me. I'm not exaggerating. I think it's every single day through this that whole process. I mean, it was just one and it was not like super long talks, but it was constant. And he talked to my wife and he got to know our family and he'd ask about my kids. I mean, he just kind of got to know Thomas. I mean, just got to know our players. And so it just that, you know, it was kind of, there was no question that, that he was more, um, you could just tell he, he loved what we were doing. He loved the, the way that we were talking to him and about what we were building, the way we were building it, um, and just uh, kind of embraced and just, like I said, he just came to the, to the conclusion that he wanted to be one of the, the game changers for this place and started that phrase, called it the new wave, and just kind of something that stuck, you know, and sometimes you never know how those things will go, but but it's just, uh, you know, he's got that infectious type of personality. And the other thing, too, is because he was such a, a big name down there that, uh, you know, you talk to other high school coaches and other players, he mentioned his name, it was just immediate you know, uh, name recognition to where the kind of player that he was and, and they knew that we were getting a pretty special guy as well. So um, just kind of, you know, once again, I think you just, you never really know how, how your relationships will take off with certain guys, but there's no question that it was a special one for your own. Health-wise, had to get through the week, everything, everyone's okay? We did, except for, you know, Devondre Love uh, yesterday went down with a lower leg injury, so he's probably not going to be traveling with us, so, um, which uh, that's just, Part of it, you know. So and we'll, we'll see how that goes. He he may or may not go yet, but we'll we'll see. Other than that, feel pretty good, you know, with our guys and, and uh, coming off the bye week and, and uh, be ready to roll. Kalen yesterday named on that Burroughs watch mm -hmm. list and such. I know we talked a lot in August about your working relationship with him as he was installing and doing things and such. But now that we're ten weeks, eleven weeks in, talk a little bit about what that working relationship's been with him all year. Yeah, it's been uh, really really good. You know, I think it, there's always a transition part where you get to know each other in both directions and and me to, to, to gain more and more confidence in him and so um, Barry uh, was impressed from the beginning you know which is why I wanted him here but just the ability to to communicate with both the coaches I've said in those meetings and with those guys you know as he handles the room of coaches as they game plan and and then uh, more importantly you know when it gets to the players and being able to articulate the uh, you know the reads and the keys and the, the uh, going through the teaching the quarterbacks spend a lot of time in those meetings with those guys and so um but but have you know as the season has progressed you know you, you you gain a lot of confidence in the way that they go about you know game planning and figuring things out and and so you, you learn to trust that you know and, and uh, so but i just you know i'm very uh you know i tried to empower him you know and, and, and that was the plan from the beginning and and that's what I, and i believe in that as a leader you know you hire great people and you let them do their job and, and but there is accountability you know and so you have to be able to um Gets to the point where, and we meet, you know, once a week, or once once the game plan is completely all squared away and talked through every single thing, and and how he feels about all different stuff. And we talk obviously throughout the week, but but just to be able to, you know, um, create a lot of trust. And I, and I think, you know, we I shared some stories with our players about some things that happened in even in the Nebraska game, and it was the clock's running down, and it, it was it became a matter of trust. And I, I do trust him and, and give him that freedom to be able to make decisions and. Uh, feel like that he's just done a tremendous job of building the confidence of our guys, and and it has to continue. You know, there's no question we have a, a really important three-game stretch here that will define our season and how we, uh, how this group is remembered. And so I just think that he uh, just continues to um, you know, create an environment on offense where the guys believe, and now they're executing at a high level, and uh, it just has to continue. The takeaways aspect of your football team, I know it started out a little slow, but are you noticing a little more ball hawking? Yeah. It's been it's been growing, and it definitely, as we said, you know, it does. They kind of happen in clumps, it seems, and and uh, and we're, we're plus one, I think, right now overall, which is a very important part of uh, of our team. That's how you win football games: is protected on offense and create takeaways on defense. And you know, I mentioned that going even into the last couple of games, those takeaways were going to be huge for our team and protected on offense as well. And they proven to be very valuable, and they always are. You know, that's how you you know in this day and age of high tempo offenses and a lot of possessions and. That's how you, uh, you know, steal those possessions and eliminate them from scoring points. And, 
you know, three and outs are great. They're harder, harder to get than they used to be, but uh, they're still important. The takeaways have become even more important. They've always been a big deal, but uh, we've always emphasized them, and that won't change. But uh, yeah, we just gotta, you know, gotta find a way. They've, they've really done a good job protecting the football. I know they had some issues last week, but that's been that was uncharacteristic of them to do that. So that's been a big part of their success. So I know that's going to be a big party for them. But that's what the game comes down to, you know, is uh, being able to take the ball away on one side and protect it on the other. Coach, I know you mentioned the exploratory surgery with Mike Pence yeah. before. And was there a second surgery required, or were they able to do no, the procedure? No, they got everything. When they did the exploratory part of it, they were able to figure out exactly what the issue was and then get it, get it cleaned up from there. But, yeah, there's been no other. Now it's just a matter of just sitting down and we got a hell we're working on a very, very comprehensive plan to, to get him rehabbed and recovered and then also developed. You know, how are, to get some how good are spirits? Meetings. Good. You know, I had a really good meeting with him this week one-on-one -on -one and just kind of going through and just talking to him about just, hey, you know, just life and just how you handle all this. And it's hard. And, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take him on a trip with us. And I think that's important and uh, to continue to keep him around our guys. And he's able to do that. You know, sometimes guys have surgery and they can't travel that this quickly. But, but uh, he's able to do that. And uh, we'll just, uh, when we can physically start doing the rehab, we will. Right now it's a matter of just letting it heal up and then go from there. But, yeah, I feel very confident that he'll be 100% um, by spring ball. You know, so, but we've got to also not just heal. We have to, you know, get stronger, get bigger, get, uh, get ourselves where we're just keep growing and developing. And that's part of the, the next step for him. Do you put a headset on? We only get so many that we can use. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Thanks, Thank coach. you. Thanks, coach.